We're going to go through the three different types of naming systems that we've used up to this point. They're going to be all in order, but I'm going to discuss how we know which naming system to use when we get to those formulas. So um, in this first formula, I see it doesn't start with H, so it makes it not an acid. There's not three or more atoms, so then that means I need to look at the first atom. It's a metal, so I know that this is an ionic compound. I need to split my formula, call the first atom what it is. Since it's magnesium, magnesium doesn't need Roman numerals. So I have magnesium. Then since it's just a nonmetal, I take the original name and add an IDE. So magnesium chloride would be its name. Uh, second compound doesn't start with hydrogen, therefore not an acid, not three more atoms. First atom's a metal, so this is ionic. Sodium doesn't take Roman numerals, so it's just called sodium. Name the first ion, name the second ion. S is called sulfide. Third substance uh, doesn't start with hydrogen, but this does have three or more atoms, so that means it contains a polyatomic ion split after the metal. GA is called gallium. Gallium doesn't take Roman numerals. The back end is called sulfite, so this is gallium sulfite. So for each of these ionic substances, you just name each particle what it happens to be called. Moving forward, um, this is ionic because it's not three or doesn't start with hydrogen, not three more atoms, but it's a metal to a nonmetal, so you split it. Iron does take Roman numerals, and I know that because it lives in the transition metals. Most of those take Roman numerals, and it says it on the back of my periodic table. So I know it's going to be iron something. So I will leave the space for my Roman numerals. O is called oxide. I figure out Roman numerals by looking at the back end of my formula. O is a minus two charge. Formulas have to sum to zero, so that means that iron has to be plus two, which gives me Roman numeral two. Next compound, we already know that iron takes a Roman numeral. It's a metal to a nonmetal. So we're going to do iron. We have space for the Roman numerals. O is going to be oxide. To figure out which iron we have, we can reverse crisscross this. So this will be a plus three. I could have also done O is minus two times three which gives me minus six, which means that over here it has to be plus six. Plus six divided by the two copies of iron means each one's plus three. <clears throat> so iron is iron three, and we predicted that from reverse crisscrossing. Then I have SNO2. Um, we know it's ionic because it's a metal to a nonmetal. It's, not it's not an acid. So 10 is SN, and 10 needs Roman numerals. O is called oxide. We know that oxide's minus two, we've used it a couple times. There's two copies, which makes minus four total negative, and that means I need to have equal and opposite positive. So four, so this is 10, four, IV. Then my last example here on this page, uh, we know that this is ionic because it's three or more atoms and it doesn't start with hydrogen, split after the metal. <laughs> PB is called lead. Lead needs Roman numerals. NO3 is called nitrate. Nitrate's a minus one. There's two copies. So that's minus two total negative charge. I need to have equal and opposite positive. So lead to nitrate. Moving on to my next sheet. These are all covalent. Now they're all covalent because they're um, not acids. They don't start with hydrogen. And then they're all binary. So then the first atom is a nonmetal in all of these cases, making them nonmetal to nonmetal covalent. For covalent naming system, we need to use prefixes. We need to use a prefix always on the back atom and on the front atom if the subscript's two or greater. So the prefix for two is di. First atom gets a full first name, dinitrogen. Second atom prefix for three is tri, oxide. Second name, uh, don't need a prefix for only a subscript of one. So this is just full first name, nitrogen. And then prefix, tri, iodide. This is the case where we go ahead and use the double vowel to start. Third substance, uh, nitrogen again. We don't need the prefix because there's only one copy of the first atom. But the second atom, we are always doing a prefix. And you could write monooxide, but we drop 
the double O in this case. I would not mark that wrong if you um, do a double O, but this would be a better name. And then we have die, because this time the subscripts two or greater, phosphorus. And then five is pent, penta, penta sulfide. Next sheet. Now these are all acids. We know these are all acids because they begin with hydrogen and water is not one of these formulas. So acids you split after the hydrogen. You need to know what the name of this anion is. This is chlorite. So ite turns to us. So chlorite turns to chlorus. And then acid at the end. H2S, S is called sulfide, I turns to the hydroic, so sulfide turns to hydrosulfic, or in this case, um, this is a nuance, hydrosulfuric acid. <clears throat> but I would also accept hydrosulfic. Then HNO3 is put after the hydrogen. NO3 is called nitrate. Eight turns to ic by itself. This one doesn't have the hydro. So replace the eight with ic, nitric acid. So those are examples of ionic, covalent, and acid naming systems. These were each separated into different groupings of namings, but you'll need to be able to identify the kind of formula that happens to be on your sheet and uh, use the appropriate rules. Ionic will be three or more atoms, not starting with hydrogen uh, or a metal to a nonmetal. And then covalent will be two nonmetals, they will all be binary. And then finally, acids will start with H. It's normally easiest to identify your acids first because that's such an easy thing to see. Then of the formulas remaining, look for the ones that have three or more atoms because those will be your ionics. And then all of your formulas left will be binary compounds. You will need to look and see if the first atom is a metal or a nonmetal. If the first atom is a metal, it's ionic. If it's a nonmetal, it's covalent. I hope that helps.